Now, recall when we were talking about fractions that we met the notion of complex fractions. A complex fraction was a fraction whose numerator or denominator might themselves be fractions. Now, we saw one way to simplify those, namely by treating them as a division problem. If the numerator and denominator are written in the form of decimals, it turns out that there's a shortcut. Let's say we have the complex fraction 1.6 over 0 0.75. We could rewrite that as a division problem, but that would involve doing decimal division, which doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Instead, we can try multiplying the numerator and denominator by the same power of 10. Now the power of 10 we're going to choose is the smallest one that will get us whole numbers in both places. And thinking about what we've seen, we'd like to multiply the numerator by a 1 followed by 1 zero, and we'd like to multiply the denominator by a 1 followed by two zeros. Right? Multiplying 1.6 by 10 would get us a whole number. Multiplying 0.75 by 100 would get us a whole number. We have to multiply the numerator and denominator by the same thing, however, if we're going to get an equivalent fraction. So we're going to choose the larger one. So when we do that, we move each decimal point two places to the right. So we get 1, 6, 0, point over 0, 7, 5, point. So 160, 70 fifths. Hmm. Do those have any factors in common? Well, they've got a 5, right? I'm going to divide my numerator and denominator each by 5. For that division, I can use my calculator if I like. I'll have 32 And I think that that's in lowest terms. The only factors of 15 are 3 and 5. Neither one goes into 32. Hmm. Is that right? 32 fifteenths. Well, that's improper. This was also improper. That looks good. Let's see what happens if I put the original fraction into my calculator. And convert it to a simplified fraction. Yes, 32 fifteenths. So that really does work.